We just saw a very impressive presentation of the importance of Turkey as a content generator, not only in its own country, but increasingly internationally. And we have a very distinguished and important panel this morning. I'm going to try not to ruin anybody's name, so please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, down at the end, we have Juan Vicente. He's the Director of International Content at Mega in Chile. Uh, then we have uh, John Okan. He's the CEO uh, and President of ITV Intermedia in Turkey. Um, followed by Kim Moses. She's a producer at Sander Moses Productions in the USA. We then have Kerem, please pronounce your last name. Chatay. Chatay, thank you. Uh, the CEO of Ayapim in Turkey. And Pelin, please, you do your last name for me. Nishtas. <laughs> from, from Canal D. Okay, well, we. For those of you who were here in the previous presentation, we saw a little bit about Turkish dramas. But while the international stage may have heard about Turkish dramas only in the last five, six years, there have been a phenomenon in Turkey for quite some time. To our Turkish panelists, give us a little bit of background. How important are they? What kind of ratings do they garner? And, and when did the phenomenon first start? Uh, it was started with Gümüş, uh, I think it was seven years ago, and it was a milestone. Uh, it was in MENA, Middle East, and um, the final episode was watched by 85 million people in that wow. region, and half of them was male. <laughs> Uh, so it started the doors, it opened the doors to Turkish drama for these international uh, sales and the global success. And then uh, we expand the region to East Europe, Far East, um, and then finally Latin America. Um, and and we have we have a map. We have a slide yeah. back here, right? Mm -hmm. That shows the the expansion of Turkish drama yeah. around the world, right? Yeah. Right. John can give uh, more about ratings and... Yeah, the success story of the Turkish content in Latin America, it all started with uh, Mega Chile. We all thank to uh, Juan Vicente for his support and for his belief in our content. So, uh, mainly the, the series that are uh, being successful in the region, they are the Turkish dramas. So, uh, we have so far reached 21 territories in, uh, in Latin America. And uh, the, the, the growth is still in progress. Can I, can I jump in? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we were the, the first TV station in, in, in America to launch a Turkish series. And it was a smash hit surprise right away. The, we launched 1001 Nights. Um, I remember on March 3rd, 2014, at the end of that month, it was already with huge success, doing more than 40% of shares. So it was incredible how fast the, the story really jumped in and took all on the audience. What was it? What was it that connected with your viewers? I, well, th there is a bunch, a, a bunch of reasons. I, I think that the main one is because it had a great, great love story in there. And the love story was a different type of conflict that we have, that we usually have in, 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 in America, and Latin America especially. We're made from soap operas, we're made from telenovelas. And, and this one worked as a telenovela, but with a different conflict on it. The conflict was, uh, was not about social classes. The conflict was about a moral and ethical issue. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1001 Night, it was a guy who paid a woman to have sex with him, and she needs the money to save his son. And in Fat Magul, it's about a rape, a woman that is raped not by one man, by three men at the same time, and how she overcomes that and find love with one of the person that was there during the rape. So it was a, a, an ethical and moral conflict that really jumped in into the audience, especially in the female audience. That's, is our most important part of it. Okay. And is it fair to say that the production values, Kim especially, what, what attracted you, um, given the vastness and complexity of the, of the US market, what was it about Turkish dramas that you thought could find a home in the US? Well, first of all, it, it was, it's been amazing, our relationship with Turkey for over the last three years, to watch it 
it's been building and building and had a lot of success in the last three years. I think it's really exploded. And when we saw the end, Son, which we then turned into Runner, um, can we do the panel? I mean, the slides, or do you oh, want me to wait? In to a minute, it? yeah, okay. we'll do it in a second. So the, the three things were female empowerment. There was a very strong a woman at the center of it, which we knew would attract a big star, and it did. It uh, attracted Paula Patton, who was in Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, and she's in uh, War of the Worlds, um, the video game that's being turned into a feature, and Adam Rodriguez was the other one, um, who's a world uh, international television star who started in CSI Miami and then uh, has been in Magic Mike, Mike and has now in uh, Empire, has a great arc in Empire. We knew that the characters would attract really strong stars. Um, the next thing is that in the marketplace, the themes that the end uh, really uh, had at the center of it were very accessible to the United States, just like you were talking about. It was female empowerment. It was, uh, you know, thriller sensibility, uh, family drama, and uh, a mystery that would unfold with a conspiracy under underneath it. Um, and so those, and, and then the third thing was that Turkey is so prolific in the social media, as you saw 40 million people participate right. in social media. And that's also a very important thing in the United States and then also for Sandra Moses because we work at the intersection of television and digital media and every piece of content that we develop has to have that component at the center of it. So those four quadrants were something that was very interesting. And then the other thing was that when we looked at the trailer and then looked at the movie, um, you know, uh, what Katam is, um, you know, what Kareem has, has produced is very modern sensibility. And so when you're taking those trailers and you're shopping them around Hollywood, a lot of times there's a disconnect, even just in the visual sense of it. And when we showed that trailer, we immediately got competitive buyers. Um, it became a very competitive situation. Speaking of that, let's, we have a, a, a short clip that will show a little bit of a, of a panorama of Turkish drama, correct? Mm -hmm. But just one thing, um, the average length of an episode of a Turkish drama is? Now it's 140, 130 <laughs> minutes, okay? <laughs> and the budget, and you do, the quality that you'll see in a minute is done with an average budget of? Three hundred thousand dollars. dollars. In the States, what is the average cost it's of about a? about 43 minutes, and it's about, I mean, a pilot is seven million dollars. So, but when we told okay. the writers how long, <laughs> I know, it's shameful. When we to told the writers how long a, a, a Turkish episode is, they almost fainted yeah. the idea that you have to do that for 22 episodes. And one, in, to put this in perspective, in Latin America, the average for a novella is, is how long an episode and what's the budget? They're usually 45 minutes and $70,000. So okay. this is a big, big production. So with that context, can we please see the ITV clip? Realizing their lifelong dream together. The daughter of a tycoon, about to launch her dream career, celebrates her birthday with her father. But then, the unexpected happens. The tycoon and the cop's fiancé framed as lovers. A strange twist of fate brings two opposite worlds together. A series of mysteries will lead them on a road to unravel a web of lies. A breathtaking story of deception, treason, and dark family secrets. Missing diamonds are the clue to surprising revelations. And romance will help them survive. Black Money Love.
Okay, so that's a rather diverse range of topics, subject matter, and but the quality is always there. So you put every cent on the screen, or every piece, oh, cent, <laughs> okay, on the screen, sorry. I was gonna say euro, but the, anyway. Uh, Kerem, you're known as a trailblazer. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the sun, which became the end, came to the screen. Give us a little bit of background, and then we'll, we'll move into how it crossed the Atlantic over to the US. Uh, actually, it was a, first it was a feature film idea of a writer, Perkun. I don't know if he's here. Then we, it was something different for us. It, actually, we had the idea, let's make a drama just for 25 episodes. You don't have it normally in Turkey. It's like the aim is to have 80 episodes. Okay. okay. Uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a hard one because it, we had too much of flashbacks and flash forwards and Turkish audiences is not very used to that. Mm. Uh, I guess it was the success of uh, Sweden. It, it was on air at Sweden. It took great ratings. Then I guess it was the, uh, it was the success of Swedish TV who puts it on the radar of, radar of Xander Moses. Then, when the, after the news that a U.S. production company has the option to re remake it, in a week we had seven Western Europe countries asking for the rights as well. So we had like it was like three years ago we had a breakfast meeting with Kim, and she asked that she was surprised with the trailer. She want to have that. Uh, it's all start with that. Then. It was last March, I guess, I was on the set of Runner at Chicago. It was a nice feeling, though. The whole story of Turkish drama, international sales, is like positive comp competition, because any Turkish drama which has a success around the world helps the other ones, yeah. okay? I mean, it started like with like 20 countries. Now it's, we have around 120 countries who you have Turkish content, contents. Out of 60 of them, it's a habit to watch it. Mm. They know the ca talents, they know the writers, uh, they follow the next ones. Even they know the upcoming projects. So we have, right now we have, we are talking about Son. We have another Turkish drama called Game of Silence. It's gonna be on the US. We, they are planning to do the remake of Ezel is another drama, and another company is dealing with Kuzey Güney. I guess some other dramas from other producers and other broadcasters are gonna be in the US, hopefully. Great. Uh, it's like, Turkish drama has a storytelling that works in US, hopefully, in Chile, in Qatar, in Greece. It's a common sense. Uh, we didn't do meetings to take, think about it, what kind of a storytelling can do that, but in the end, yes, as Juan said, the same, let's say, maybe not the same traditions, but the same feeling, uh, a storytelling way of serving helped us to have success on all of those countries. Right. So it was Kim who saw the trailer and wanna have the rise of song, it all started with that. How about if we look at that trailer? We have a trailer of the end. So this is the original Turkish show. And this is probably, Kim, what you saw that, okay, let's, let's take a look at that trailer. We all have three friends, Vahid Abla. We saw it, we saw it, we saw it. We saw it, we saw it, we saw it, we saw it, we saw it. Kocam istiyor. Ne şart olursa olsun. Kocam bana geri vereceksiniz. Şimdi düşünüyorum da Selim o zaman Ankara'ya gitseydi ben olmazdım. Okay, Kim, you saw this, and you're thinking the U.S. market. And as you mentioned before, you saw a certain number of elements that you thought could work. Take it from there. <laughs> yeah. 
So, but, but first I want to say when Corinne went to, came to Chicago, because we shot in Mexico City in Chicago, and it was really amazing because he showed up on the set and, you know, the Hollywood is, it's kind of a jaded group of people. Um, and when he showed up, he was like a movie star. And everybody from the head of transportation <laughs> to the catering <laughs> to the stars themselves had watched the series, which was, you know, that was impressive that they got hooked into it even, you know, before we made the pilot. So that was, that was really nice. It was wonderful to have him come full circle to the United States. Um, so, but one of the things that uh, we found really interesting is in taking a format and moving it over into the United States was how do you take the overarching themes, uh, you know, not the universal themes, but the themes that are accessible to your specific culture. So the premise of, uh, of the end, Runner, was that this woman is married to this lovely guy and he's a doctor and she's an, uh, we, an architect. and. Um, they have a great family life and she says goodbye to him and he goes on a plane to a conference and the plane crashes and she thinks he's dead and then she discovers that in fact he's, he was never on the plane and so the mystery is what happened to him and where is she, he and she's in love with him and she wants to figure it out. And please jump in, but in your story it was a family drama and thriller. Yeah, it was family. In your case it's a little bit more thriller. <laughs> it's about. <laughs> it's more like about gun shipping. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's U.S. Right. <laughs> so we had to figure out what to do because yours took place in Iran and Turkey, and ours we needed two different countries that made sense for the United States. So of course it was Mexico and uh, the United States. It was Chicago and Mexico City, and. For us, the underlying theme, as you probably all know, even from the incident um, this week, is that guns are a huge issue in the United States, and there are 300 million guns. And 92% of the people in the United States have a point of view about guns. They either love them, hate them, or, you know, but everybody almost in the, on the, con in the country has a point of view. So what we decided to do was take the most culturally relevant theme in the United States, which is guns and gun running, and put that at the center of it. And there we talked to the Mexican, the representatives in the United States of the Mexican embassy, and they told us that you know, there was an issue. We all knew it, but they confirmed it, that the United States gun running over the border into Mexico is fueling this civil war between the cartels. And then there was also an issue of an ISIS type of element that was also in Mexico coming over the border. So we took all those pieces and wove them together and kept laid on top of that the family thriller with this woman at the center. Can I show this? The clip or the, yeah. or the uh, yeah. slide? The, the slide clip? and the clips. The slide first? Yeah. Yes, could we see the slide? Could we have the slide up? Here we go. Yeah. So, you know, we thought again. Uh, that runner would work really well with a female star because that's really what's trending in television and features in the United States. And these are the themes and the shows that hit those themes very successfully in the United States and around the world. So we knew that runner would have broad appeal. And then this is a total engagement experience, which is something my partner Ian Sander and I have created called um, uh, uh, it's an infinity loop and we drive people from platform to platform with different assets and because Runner worked so well in social media over in Turkey we knew that this would translate in the United States in a very powerful way and then we can run the clip okay. All right. and this is the beginning of the show the first scene it's halfway through the season we started storytelling wise with it and then we jump back to the beginning of the story Hey, could we see the clip of the runner, please? We know who you are. Some woman who has come a long way just to die. Whatever truth you think 
you have found. You are wrong. Solo una sale. Only one of you can leave. It's okay. Already dead. Yes, you can. Do it. No! Stop. Take a breath. Ask yourself one question. Are you willing to lose everything you are to save everything you love? Okay, Karim, a question. Um, is it enough to have a great story? Or does the fact that you studied in the United States, that you were more familiar with the culture and the market, did that also help? I mean, do you, do you have to have a certain knowledge about the market and the culture that you are trying to sell to, to help these adaptations come through? Mm, I mean, even my primary school experience <coughs> is helping me, I guess. But uh, there's one point. We don't produce, we don't aim to produce for US or other markets. The main is your domestic Focus market. Is do yeah. domestic, because if it's not this successful in Turkey, you won't be having that episodes and you won't be having international sales and nothing. So, as I said, we always try to tell a good story in a good way. Uh, and at the end of all this process, if it's successful in Turkey, luckily it's successful in other regions as well. But to be honest, we never had meetings, okay, let's do something that would work for right. US. Right, it's always, you start with a good story for your yeah. audience first. Because if it's not successful in Turkey, nobody will care about right. it. Right, right. Uh, so, the primary school, the high school, whatever. Everything here, helps. Yeah, even the college, yes, it helps, but the main focus is tell a good story. And when you, when you pitched to the networks, how did they receive this? Did they see this as something different or they saw it as a, you know, a great story? Well, they were very excited. We had a feature writer, Michael Cooney, um, attached to it to write it, and he was a fresh voice for television. And the idea, you know, when they saw the trailer and then we were able to talk them through the themes and the characters and the story and the world and the success that the end was having, you know, in different parts of the world, they became very excited. And so, you know, there was more than one buyer um, right away. And then, as I said, it was very competitive. So, um, but they got it. They, they got it really easily right. and uh, quickly. Right. And for all the, the Turkish panelists, are you noticing that there's a direct connection between increased development time and increased success internationally of the Turkish dramas? I think Kerem should answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yes, it is always. I mean, uh, normally with an A-class drama in everywhere, we, you, we have a period like 8 to 12 months. Uh, sometimes it took longer. But every, I mean, mostly all Turkish production companies has a pre-production period like that because otherwise, you will focus problems in production, on, also on screen. And sometimes broadcasters wants you to make it quicker, mm. <laughs> as she Is will say. So? <laughs> Normally not, but sometimes <laughs> we have to push them a little bit more. And, and uh, Jen, you're celebrating the 23rd anniversary of your company. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this year it's our 23rd uh, year anniversary. and. Uh, it actually first started with uh, distributing foreign content in Turkey. Then uh, six, seven years ago, uh, it all switched to uh, selling Turkish content worldwide. So that's, and we are quite happy uh, by doing Turkish content export. So uh, I hope that the business is going to go in the same way as it went uh, so far. Okay, and when did you first open up to the Latin American market? When did you first see potential there? 
We actually believed in the Latin American market for quite a long time, five, six years minimum. And we have been attending uh, NATP and LA screenings uh, for five, six years. Also uh, marketing our programming uh, in, the in the same region uh, at MIPCOM, MIP TVs, etc. And finally, a year ago, about a year ago, with, like I said earlier, uh, with the support of uh, Mega Chile, Juan Vicente, uh, we succeeded. And uh, we have a quite good uh, a, a team dedicated to Latin America only, uh, consisting of uh, my wife, actually, she is Spanish, and uh, another uh, friend of ours from Peru. <coughs> they are doing the sales in Latin America, and uh, I believe that they have been very successful so and, far. And what did you think it was about the Latin American audience with their addiction to novellas that would embrace a Turkish drama? I actually believe that the uh, Turkish and Latin American family values are quite similar. And uh, that was probably the main reason that uh, our content became successful. I don't know what Juan would say for this. Uh, Tell them about the kissing part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had a meeting yesterday and, and I asked that I had heard that in a novella there's a lot of romance right from the very beginning, while in a Turkish drama the first kiss is, is, doesn't come the first, second, third, first fourth, season, or fifth final. <laughs> episode. It comes much later. So how did your audience embrace that factor? Well, th there is a lot of issue, a part of a good story. Uh, I think the work for us is the excellent production value that the shows have, and you know, we can see that. And also because they look like us. That was something very important when we saw the show for the first time. It was, the, you know, you see Fatma Gul and she looked like a woman in Chile. Like she didn't have any difference. So people can embrace that and say, well, they are here. They are, they are you know, one of us. And that was a key, a key point to it. And the other thing that you were uh, talking about is uh, how they work the love story. You know, we, we, we are made of love stories in, in, in Latin America. You know, we're very dramatic in that sense. And, and the kiss is very important. And the kiss is always, you know, in the first, second episode, it didn't happen like that, neither in 1001 Nights, neither in Fatma Gul. In Fatma Gul, for us, because we, you know, edited, it was like in the 113 episode they kissed for the first time, the, 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 the two protagonists. And it was such a huge success, you know, all the Gumans were crazy about it. It was the front page of the newspaper, like the kiss between Fatma Gul and Karim. And everybody was ecstatic about it. You know? Because everybody was waiting. It was such a, you know, uh, sexual tension of it. It was such a tension. It never, you know, it, and evolved and evolved and evolved, but never, they were never together. So when they are together, it was like, whoa, this is like the marriage in our, you know, soap operas. <laughs> it was the first kiss between them. All right, let's give a little background about Fatma Gul, because it's not your ordinary show. It deals with pretty strong subject matter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was a very fragile and intense story, because it's about rape, and in our country, no one wants to talk about this, no one wants to face this. Uh, you read it on the newspapers all the time. Still, we have these issues, but these facts. But uh, no one wants to look behind what's happening. So, and we can say maybe it's like a little bit taboo in our country too. Uh, and we had lots of troubles about this storytelling in the government side and the. Um, Parliament also, uh, but um, AJ is our writer and she is here also. Um, we uh, th there there was a risk uh, to seem like we are abusing it, mm. uh, but uh, it was a real story. It's a real story, and uh, it's the power. It's the story's power is coming from this fact. I think. Even in the second season, um, they're thinking about what we're going to do in the second season. <laughs> oh my God. What will be the story uh, goes like. And they found a real uh, case uh, from south of Turkey. Uh, and they take the real court case to the plot. They match the plot with the real case. And I think Fatma Gül is uh, taking the power um, of storytelling from these facts. Because it's real. Right. So you saw, 
how did you get involved? You saw the trailer, they, they, you were approached with the show, and, and what did you think would work for your audience? Yeah, we, it, we were in a crossroad because we did have 1001 Nights with a huge success rating. So everybody was saying like, well, this is a one shot. This is the only one, the Turkish won't leave again, you know? So the second show was even more important for us that had to be a good show on the air. It was you know, more important than the first one because that way we will say to the audience, well, here is something that can you know, keep on going for years. And, and it was a hard decision uh, you know, to choose the right one. And we choose Fat Magul. Gladly we choose Fat Magul. Um, mainly because of two reasons. There was a, a, a story that, that it was different. It starts with a rape, with a woman of a rape. And it's very, very violent. And for our culture, it's very, you know, it's a, it's a very strong issue. And how from that rape you can turn into a love story with a guy that participate, even though it's not, you know, the, he doesn't rape her, rape her uh, he participate in the rape. How you can construct, create a story from there. And the thing that we like the most, because our audience is mainly females, we have 70% females, is uh, the role of the woman in there how she overcome the rape, mm. how she uh, get a new place in society, how she value herself again, and from that value, how she find love again. And that was the thing that thrilled us the most. It was a, you know, a love story about recovery, in a way. Mm. And, and the thing that we like, and the same happened with One Thousand and One Nights, is that the, the male character for us was even more important than the female one. Uh, in this case, Karim, you hate him in the first episode. Karim is the uh, protagonist of One Tatana One Night, and you hate him because he is involved in a rape. And in the episode number 10, you love him. You're in love with him. They turn him around because he's a guy that, in a way, participates in there, but, but then you, you realize that he's a good guy. He has a good soul, and he really wants to take care of, take care of her you know, and, and love her. So you start liking him. The same happened with 1001 Nights. The guy pay a woman to have sex with him, uh, a woman that really needs the money, you know? And so he's a really mean guy. And then they turn her around. And then the fifth episode, you love the guy. He isn't as bad as he is. So that kind of things uh, really like the woman. Can, let me tell you just a, a short story of a tweet that I, that I read uh, watching um, uh, Kerim, you know, talking to Fat Magul. I always read, you know, the tweets when we were have the show on the air. And a woman tweet said, well, you know, I just uh, hear Kerim talking about Fat Magul and the lovely things that he said to, to, to her, you know. And I look at to my side and I see this boring guy next to me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> having in bed. Why I do, don't have a Kerim with me? And everybody was in love with him because he, he was a caring guy. All right, on that note, <laughs> let's take a look at the clip of, uh, of Fatma Gul. Una joven llena de sueños, enamorada. Una noche. Le robaron su alma y su inocencia. Una inquietante historia de amor y redención. ¿Podrá ella? ¿Volver a amar? Tú y yo nos amamos en medio de lo imposible. Is this the guy the viewer wanted next yes, to her? Right. Okay, I understand. <laughs> I get it. Okay. All right, it's clear. Okay. Now, 
uh, social media played a huge role, both in, in Turkey and in Latin America. Should we start in Turkey? How, because we saw before there's about 40% are active on social media in yeah. Turkey. How did that play into? Turkey is a very young country. The average age is 28, I think this year 29. Uh, so uh, we have 40 million user in Facebook. Um, Turkey is a very young country and the average age is 28 uh, and we have uh, in each night we can see what's happening for example if you're going to a restaurant and you're eating something you can understand what's happening on TV because uh, each uh, yeah, each program is in the top tweets and actually if you're eating this dinner at Chile or let's say New York, you can understand because you will see the world trending topics right. and you will see something is written in Turkish and you will just try to find out what's happening. It will be a drama or a show from Turkey because we are very, um, very powerful at social media and you can use it. Uh, of course, if a content is strong, uh, it means something. If it's not, they can just talk about one day and then they will pass. And, then it pass. and, in, and in Chile, was it the same? Was there a lot of social media around the show? Yeah, they, they were and they usually got, you know, with the trending topics, uh, Fat Magul and all the shows that we have and Sila even now or Caraparash, all of them they have, you know, really strong. But I think what happened the most is that the, the, the brand of Turkey change. And this is something very, very, very um, important because uh, now we don't even change the name of the series. We, the next series that we're going to launch is Metzesir, produced by, by Kerem. And it's, we're going to call it Metzesir. Nobody knows and understands in, in Latin America what Metzesir means. We don't care. It's already a brand in there. And Turkey, as a brand, you know, everybody said Turkey, now it's Turkey is good. So it changed like the value, the position of, of, of the brand. Um, like the travel trips uh, to Istanbul, uh, in one year, they, start, they, they raised up 400 person from Chile. Really? So the people that were going, you know, to trip as a tourism to Istanbul, 400 person more. going to make him ambassador of Turkey. Yes, okay. make him an ambassador, yes. <laughs> and and uh, really, Juan, if you're, if you're talking about the Turkish success in Latin America, we really uh, thank we want to thank to Juan, because Juan uh, has always has to be taking the risk and the first step, and he was th the man. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Thank and we, we are a team for that. You know, we we are a team, and we we believe in the content, and and it's because the stories are good. That, right. That's as simple as that. And a good story is gonna work everywhere. Right. You know, right. They're well done. Yeah. We we discovered actually that, and this was a big surprise for us. It, is that the Turkish formats are very, very famous all around the world. Like, for instance, Izel, which is the other one we're going to do with Karim. That one, over 100 million people have watched the series. It was on for, what, seven years, or how long was it on? No, it was for two seasons. Two seasons. But it's over 70 episodes, so yeah. you can right, say so it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and over 100 minutes. But 100 million people, and it's won many, many awards. Um, so it's, it's quite famous. Um, and I think that's really something. And in fact, when we were taking the end around to sell it, Runner, uh, what the networks, we walked into the room, we walked into the room at ABC, and as soon as we walked in, they said, we know, Turkey is the new Israel, because Israel was trending because of homeland. And um, so Turkey has pulled out in front for Fantastic. the world market. We're gonna get to Izel in a minute, but you were mentioning before um, the challenges of the second season of Fatma Gul and how you, you interwove, or the writer interwove a real, a, a real event into it, right? And I think we have a clip. Do you want to explain what we're going to be seeing? Uh, yeah, uh, we can watch it. And okay, uh, well, let's see the, the second Fatma Gul clip, please. Uh, 
uh, so this points to all women. So women rights can differ from country to country, but in every country around the world, still today, we are talking about this. Yes. And uh, I think this can also make a sympathy with your viewers, or actually, because uh, this relates to strong feelings. And I want to close my part with uh, saying of Rumi, he's our master. He says, um, not the ones speaking the same language, the ones uh, sharing the same feelings can understand each other. Exactly. I think this is about this. Exactly. That's very nice. Exactly. So we, we mentioned Ezel. So I guess the, the question to the panel is, um, what is the f where do you see the future of, of Turkish drama going? It certainly is not, as we say in the U.S., a flash in the pan. It's not something that just came up and is going to and is going to disappear. There's lasting value because these stories are good, because the production values are good. So there's another one that the U.S. is that you're right. that you're working on. Right, and and what's interesting about it is last year we produced a series called Reckless, that's airing on Netflix, and we had the International Press Day. And we were sitting on the panel, my partner and I, and the stars of Reckless. And they started taking questions from the international press about our show, Reckless, and when it was going to uh, you know, premiere. And the first question from the international press was, we heard that you bought the rights to Izzel, and when is it going to hit um, the marketplace, the American version of it? So what's interesting is that uh, not only are these shows airing in the Turkish version, but the world is looking for the next iteration of it. Okay. May we see the clip of Ezel, please? Some kill their love when they are young, and some when they are old. Her şey mi aldılar? Ailemi, arkadaşlarımı, tüm hayatımı aldı ben. Some strangle with the hands of lust. Some with the hands of gold. Sen onun kanına gireceksin. E zaten sende gözü var. Ne diyorsun? Senin için her şeyi yaparım Eyşan. Tertemiz. Sabıkası yok. Hiçbir kumarhanede sicili yok. Hiçbir vukuatı yok. Adam tertemiz. Sevmedim. Fazla temiz. Sen her şeyi istiyorsun. Ama karşılığında kimseye bir şey vermiyorsun. Ne vereyim Allah aşkına? Sevgini. The kindest use a knife because the dead soul soon grow cold. Nereler dediniz bugüne kadar? Doğru zamanı bekliyor. Some do the deed with many tears, and some without a sign. Sen aslında pek bir aşıksın bu. Benimle cehenneme bile gelirsin, değil mi? Bunu yaptım zaten. Daha zor bir şey. For each man kills the thing he loves, yet each man does not die. John, do you see as you reach a certain level of success, then you have to continually meet that level of success? What challenges do you see going forward in, in, in the Turkish drama internationally? I believe that the, the expansion will continue. We will expand in, uh, far, in the Far Eastern territories and uh, we will at a certain point cover almost all the, all the world. I, that's what I believe in. Uh, other than this, of course, uh, like Kim and Kerem had uh, uh, made, I'm sure that there will be lots of other developments for other uh, titles to be re remade in the United States and other countries of the world. Uh, we are also selling a lot of uh, format rights in Latin America, by the way, and uh, in other territories. So we have recently signed uh, an option deal uh, for Italy and Spain for 20 minutes, which is again produced by IAPM. And we believe that uh, soon uh, this title will be produced in uh, those two territories as well. So uh, there are lots of uh, challenges ahead of us to, to uh, continue with the growth of the Turkish content exports. Helen and Kerem, you see, you, you, you're positive about the, the future. Yeah, the thing is, uh, for example, we, we did a remake of an Italian uh, drama series. 
and uh, it was the original was six episodes and we did it to 24 episodes. Uh, and now from states, an uh, uh, independent production company wants to take the rights from us. And we say, no, no we are not owning the rights because we already took it from Mediaset. And they say, no, we want this uh, <laughs> script, yeah, sure. yeah. this version. This is interesting, I think, and I believe uh, this, this success is almost the ready-made ones, and I believe it can be more and more about the uh, format rights and story adaptations. Uh, there are going to be much more, we will see much more examples about this. Briefly, what I can say is there are a bunch of people, hardworking, creative, uh, likes, competi likes competition, and by the way, some of them is in this room, so we will keep on producing. We may have tons of problems, but maybe those problems give us the feeling of making, telling a conflict. Right. Uh, yes, we do have tons of problems maybe on the market and stuff, but we will keep on producing. And if they are good, they will find themselves new regions as well, right. like yeah. the Asia. And we have lots of stories still untold, sure. good stories. Sure. Can, can I say something about that? I believe that's, that's the challenge of it. Uh, wh what we do with the Turkish series that, that we dub them, we dub them to Spanish you, you were seeing on the clip there. Uh, so we don't change the story, we just change the voices a little bit. Obviously we change some words, we try to make the, the dubbing and the lip sync and everything uh, work well, but we don't change the story. When you adapt something, I think the challenge in this case, and especially for Latin America, is you you can take the soul out of this, uh, out of this series. No? They, they have a tempo, they, they have a way to connect, they have a way to express, they have a way to act. And the challenge is when you bring this and, and, and you do you know, your own version is that you don't take that soul out of the show. I think that, that's, the, that's the key point. And I believe that is extremely difficult. It's not easy to do, it's, it's, it's a good challenge. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say one thing about the marketplace, especially in the United States, and the reason that I think that you know the desire for Turkish formats and formats from all over the world is going to become more and more valuable is because we've opened up this all these platforms. We've got like 384 dramas, I think, playing in prime time right now. And there, it used to be just the five networks, and then it was cable, and now it's digital platforms like Amazon and Hulu, and those companies are moving to the forefront. And what's happening is the incubation period for American dramas where you conceive the drama, you take it, you shop it, then you have the writer write it, and then you micromanage it into a pilot, and then you order series is about a nine-month nine to a year process. But because there are, such, there are so many new platforms, distribution platforms, and there's such a huge appetite and audiences are binge watching and watching an entire series over a week, that there's a greater need for uh, content quicker and if you've got a proof of con uh, concept like a television show from a country that's really working that has like-minded sensibilities by social media and certain roles and themes and things then you know in the United States the networks and the studios are more apt to go for those and look at those as you know real gems in in the market as opposed to uh, you know just original ideas and trying to incubate it like we used to absolutely all right, well, we've come to the end of our time. Please help me thank our panelists, and may I just say that in a world that is so torn by conflict and different ideologies, isn't it marvelous to see that good stories and good ideas and collaboration can happen? I think television is really ruling the world. <laughs> thank you very much.